classic hard on the glass hardwood with the dime for the past two cents for the nail in the casket it's getting cold but the court stays warm and this is my position because i stay on one to the two two guard to the three guard switch send a better be true i let it off of the switch all right fucking yeah. get this fucking shit started fuck it's two four season preview show Everyone and welcome. I'm Greg Gumbel here with my partner Clark Kellogg, bringing you the 2K Sports Season Preview Show. Here are the top five teams in the nation as we head into the season. The Michigan State Spartans come in as the number one ranked team, followed by Arizona, Maryland, North Carolina, and USC. Clark, what's your take of the teams that make up the top five? These are some outstanding teams, Greg. On the watch. Not many weaknesses. They do so many things well on the basketball court. It's not surprising that seeing them in the top five. Every time these teams take the floor, you're assured of seeing entertaining basketball. Michigan State is in the catbird seat to start the season, sitting pretty in the number one spot. These are the defending national champions, and they're getting a lot of respect going into this season. Usually, last year's champs get the benefit of the doubt in the first poll of the next season. But we'll find out soon enough if their position in the top five is based on reputation or is warranted. Arizona is in the number two spot. They'll be trying to build on last season's regular season conference championship. No matter how many different pieces they have this year as compared to last, they'll go into this season with the attitude of we're the champ, and if you want the crown, you've got to go through us. Maryland comes in as number three. Certainly, they'll get a big boost from the return of their leading scorer from a year ago. That's a big advantage for them. They don't have to spend the first few weeks of the season searching for that go-to guy. They know who he is, and they'll use him. North Carolina starts the year as the fourth-ranked team. They lost a grand total of just one game last season. What can you say about that record except job well done, fellas? Now go out and do it again. If they can, that's the stuff that legends are made of. USC is the number five team. They carry over three starters from last year, so there shouldn't be too much of a learning curve for this team. Yeah, they've got the core of that team coming back, and that's going to be huge for them. There won't be much of a feeling out process that so many other teams will have to work through early in the season. Here's the next group of teams in our preseason top 25. What's your impression of that set of teams? With such a long season ahead of us, it's almost impossible to put a finger on just who the contenders and pretenders are from this set of teams. But that doesn't mean we won't try. The Syracuse Orange, the number eight team, has been a topic of discussion heading into the season. They had a wonderful year last season, finishing with 24 wins. That 20-win plateau is one of those benchmarks in college hoops that immediately classifies you as an elite team. So they're going to have a tough act to follow. But if they simply play to their potential, they can reach that mark again. The Gonzaga Bulldogs, the number nine team, have also generated a lot of interest for a mid-major team. That's a pretty nice ranking going into a season. This team has to be ecstatic with their position in the poll. The hardest thing for a mid-major to do in a season is earn respect. Now that they've got it from the get-go, it's simply a matter of holding on to it. Okay, Clark, let's take a look at the teams that close out the preseason top 25 poll. What do you think of this collection? It doesn't get much weaker as you go down the list. Even near the end of the top 25, we see teams that could make a serious go at the national championship if things fell into place. I wouldn't count anyone out. The Butler Bulldogs, the number 16 team, probably deserve a closer look. They lost a big piece of their team with the departure of last season's leading rebounder. It's going to have to be a group effort on the boards for a little while until some of the younger big men get the confidence to hold their own game in and game out. The Duke Blue Devils, the number 20 team, are also worth keeping an eye on. They've got a whole crew of high school Mr. Basketballs on this team. The team is usually happy to land one Mr. Basketball. But with the number they have, this could be a golden era of basketball success at this university. There's nothing but good times ahead. There was no shortage of movement in the coaching ranks during the offseason. Here are all the new coaches in college basketball this season. There's quite a few interesting names on the list. Coach Nambra is one of the hires that drew a lot of media attention. The Texas Tech Red Raiders have a lot of fans that are delighted to have a coach of his ability, Clark. He's yet to find his way to that final weekend, but he still has an impressive resume. His new school is certainly hoping he can add a final four run to his list of accomplishments. 
the Akron coach also made a move to a new school. And that's generated some excitement on that campus. The Akron Zips are a team looking to rebuild under their new leader. He's going to have to make do with the players he inherited for a little while. But once he can get a year or two of recruiting under his belt and bring in his own guys, I think this program will take off. We come to the part of the show when we look at the top players in the nation and unveil the list of our preseason All-Americans. There before you are the five first-team All-Americans as we begin the season, and what a list it is. The Syracuse Orange are pinning their hopes squarely on this young man's shoulders, Clark. Flynn is the first player on the list for good reason. Feels like this guy's been playing college basketball forever. This will be his fourth year as a starter, but I still don't take him for granted. And I think this will be his best season of all of them. As for our next first team, Michigan State is more than willing to go into battle with him, Clark. Summer is simply a spectacular player. He can make things happen on the basketball court thanks to his unique ability to read and understand defenses while most players are just trying to come up with their next moves. He's three steps ahead of the game, and that's what separates the good player from the great. Next up is a player that's drawing comparisons to some of the all-time college greats. The Arizona Wildcats are fortunate to have him in their corner. Horn is one of my favorite players in the country. He was a tremendous rebounder last season. He came away with an average of six rebounds a game. I expect him to hit the glass with even more passion this year. He is a rugged competitor. Let's move on to a player who's worked very hard to earn his spot on the list. The North Carolina Tar Heels can depend on a solid effort from him each and every night. Right. He's going to play a huge role in his team's success. He's a six foot 11 inch senior power forward. This is a big man who produces big time, and he does it on a consistent basis. Unless an opposing team can counter with a big bruiser of their own to keep a body on him, he's going to run amok. And finally, we have another superb player to round out the first team. The North Carolina Tar Heel will probably get used to seeing him make the impossible look ordinary. Hugh is going to have his own personal highlight reel by the end of this season. It's extremely rare to see a true freshman on this list, but he has the kind of all-around talent that comes along once in a generation. I just hope he realizes his full potential. Now let's move on to the second team, All-American. Not such a bad list, huh? These elite players all have the potential to have historic seasons if the right pieces fall into place. The North Carolina Tar Heels have built their team around this young man's talent. I'd say that's a pretty good idea. Timba was close to a spot on the first team, but there was too much competition this season. If I had to pick some front runners for the Player of the Year award, he would be right there on the list. I've seen him take over games even when he isn't scoring 30. There are some great scores among these All-Americans, and he's one of them, but he does much more than score. The next player on the team is a sensational player in his own right. Michigan State is in for a treat if he can pull it all together and have a great year. Allen is in the spotlight for all the right reasons. There's plenty to like about him as a player. He's got that deadly combination of smarts and physical skills that makes him so difficult to defend. The coach's mentality in the body of a world-class athlete, any questions as to why he's on the list? We can expect to see some amazing performances out of him all year long. The North Carolina Tar Heels are looking for a lot of production from him, and they probably won't be disappointed. Little is an extremely powerful weapon for his team. We always talk about the guys with great hands. Well, he's got great feet. I love those happy feet. There are few players in the nation with better footwork than him, and that's what allows him to always be in the right position, whether it comes to rebounding or finding space for an open shot. Our next All-American may have designs on the first team by the end of the season. DePaul has one of the most reliable go-to guys in the country in him. Hester is one of the great talents in the college game today. In addition to everything else he did to help his team win last season, he led them in assists. It's that kind of unselfish play that has made him such a great team lead. And here we have the final player on our list of All-Americans, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Know who their fan favorite is going to be this year. Kufis is ready to have a breakout season. He returns as his team's number one scorer. His game is complete, and all he has to do is find a way to stay consistent through the season, and he'll easily be one of the top scorers in the nation. All right, Clark, that should do it for us here in the studio. For myself and all of us here at 2K Sports, thanks for watching our season preview. Enjoy all of the College Hoops action to come, everyone. All right, fucking man. Do all that shit. Now we got a fucking recruit.
down the truth. Two K eight. Feels like I hold the whole world in the palm of my hand. So if I make it a move, it just so determined that you sit or stand. My heart beating like a big drum out in the band. Then I'm sweating like I just ran a marathon, man. Look, I waited for this moment right here my whole lifetime to hit the big time, baby. The bright lights and fanatical fans, they got a banner with my name at the top of the stand. And I'm up in the hundreds and want to jump off. As soon as we tip off, huh, clear the runway. I can't be contained by your floor defense. When I jump, you stay stuck in the state of suspense. I'm making up, man, you're going to hate. Long as the ball goes in and in the end we win, then I serve my purpose. So come on, let's play this college hoop. Or fucking great. I San Diego versus North Carolina. All right. Easy. Fucking easy. All right. Get ready for college hoops on 2K Sports. The San Diego Ferreros go up against the North Carolina Georgians. Welcome, college basketball fans, to this semifinal matchup. We're here at the Boyd Noble Center. This is Vern Lundquist with Bill Raftery and Tracy Wilson. What's your take on it, Bill? I'll really be watching the matchup at the Force Finals. Right. He's arguably the best power forward in the nation today. His delivery for... Oh, fuck it. Skip it. Ah, whatever, bitch. That's usually a sure basket, but not when they defend in that tightly. Tough deal. North Carolina controls the tip. Right, hands it off. Little throws it up. The three was drained by Santiago. He's got three. Passes it up court. To the paint. Hold him. Right, right. He got free down over that turned out to be a bad miss. Santiago pulls the trigger. Oh, whatever. Nobody. Or nobody fucking goddamn box out. Ah. Uh. To the elbow. Murray. This is it to the elbow. Murray has it outside. This is left wing. Four. That's right in. They lead by one. That's good. Kimber, way up for Fire. Come on, just hit it. The fuck? It's just a blown assignment by the defense. You can't afford too many. I'd open. He just fucking misses that. Boy, 
launches one from beyond the arc. Q grabs the rock. They're still up by one. Leads him with the pass. Knocks down the first one. He gets the second to fall as well. Reyes inbounds the ball. Gets it on the free throw line. Oh my god, son of a bitch. About 17 and a half minutes left in the half. Kimba jumps it off, passes it to the wing. Santiago raises up, can't return the favor with his own three. Terrific job clearing some space under the glass. Physicality prevailing. Reyes catches it, left wing. Santiago is tagged with the reach. That's his first play. You're never going to get away bumping the ball here on a steal attempt. Too aggressive. Come on. In the ball. How did I not get that? Houston. Ball is literally phases through me. Oh, three. Hey, come on. Right. I like how he gets himself into defensive position in the right place. Right time yet again. That ball to double team it. Has it. Right wing. The reverse. It's blocked. Houston through the bucket. Tries to drop it in, but it won't go. And it's still knotted up seven. Can't convert, but he'll go to the line for two. He makes the first. He gets them both. The Toreros were the last ones to touch it, and they'll turn it over. These guys are having trouble with fundamental team play, Vern. As that turnover shows you, they don't have much in the way of chemistry at the moment. About 16 and a half minutes left in the half. To the elbow, takes the shot. The offensive rebound for Ralph Barbara put up and in on last play. Fucking six foot two motherfucker can penetrate better than that seven foot. I don't I don't get this game sometimes. Uh, I don't get it. You'd think he uses fucking strength to his advantage. Ignorsky gets the board inside. Q brings it up the floor. You would have liked to seen them get a better shot off from that kid. That's a shaky shot selection. Little. Santiago from downtown. Buries it. Coach Holland is going to let his team have it. We just can't be happy with the run that they've had just now. Well, let's get back to the action. God damn. Hurry up. There's no question what kind of defense they're in, Vern. In a minute. Swings it to the left wing. And it's scooped up by Ignerski. Thought he tried to sell the shot, but the D was alert and didn't buy. Good steal. The pump fake. Last 17 foot is missed by Santiago. He got it up there, but it just wouldn't fall. With a little more touch, lightly. Santiago is missing the reach. I even touch it lightly. Just somehow reaching in. I'm just seeing sick of those fucking fouls. Like, how dare I go for the ball? Come on. Stealing it. Just don't care. Fucking just holding on to the ball for fucking five seconds. I'm just stealing it. I don't give a shit. San Diego seems powerless to stop this run. 
And Tracy's got something for us on that. Coach Holland is frantically talking to his assistants, trying to come up with a plan on defense to stop this run. He is not pleased with their current setup, to say the least. All right, Tracy. Ignerski gets the reach in for Whatever. I don't care about this game. Ah! 7443 All right. Ah, damn. It's time for college hoops. On 2K Sports, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers battle the North Carolina Georgians. Welcome aboard, everyone, as we get ready to bring you the tournament's championship game. We're here at the Lloyd Noble Center. This is Fern Lundquist with Bill Raftery and Tracy Dorsey. What's your take, Bill? This is a terrific matchup at the small forward position. Little is right up there with the best of them when it comes to small forwards. His basketball IQ is unreal. If you wait for this fellow to make a mistake, will be waiting a long time. Pettigrew is also a solid contributor at the small forward spot. He's got great touch around the rim. He's a real dangerous post presence. Both of them are great competitors. It should be a compelling game to watch. Boom! A power forward, too! Hell yeah! The fuck? Come on, get the ball! There we go. This guy can usually finish in traffic, but the D was too good, even for him on that one. Santiago throws it up. Q grabs the rebound inside. Ah, son of a bitch. Let's check in with the third member of our team, Tracy Wolfson. Tracy? Guys, earlier today I caught up with Coach Williams. He told me offense is not an area of concern for this team. He's confident in their ability to put points on the board and hopes their effectiveness offensively carries over to the other end of the field. We'll see you Thank you, Tracy. Whatever. That hit the fucking... Oh, whatever. Santiago takes it up. It's I, I literally cannot get inside ever. <laughs> Everything has to be like a goddamn Stephen Curry fucking highlight reel or some bullshit. Just be score. If you're going to go for the steal like that, you've got to be careful with your hands. Bishop inbounds the ball. Pettigrew uses the crossover. Passes baseline. Hurry up, you fucking son of a bitch. Little with the shot. Fades it for three. They're now up by three. It off. Fisher. Out right. Backs in. Feeds it to the left side. Puts it up. Fails to hit anything with the shot by Fisher. Right around 18 minutes left in the half. He got it up there, but it just wouldn't fall. Here. With a little more touch. They're going to double team it. Wallace. Passes it to the wing. Goes to the crossover. Book out from 18 feet away. Little gets the board inside. Q brings it up the floor. Little went after that rebound. Great work. 
finishes in close by eight. Number 35 gets it inside off target on the last layup. It's still early, Vern, but they can't take any more time to get this thing going. It hasn't been pretty for them so far. He makes the first. Ah, shit. Well, he's not bad for a fucking center. Swing pass. Right wing. Hooked away. But it's recovered by Pettigrew. Pettigrew is going to the charge, and that's a turnover. How about the job by the defender there? Way to step in front and take the charge, young fella. Come on. Little there you go. The ball. Santiago. Boom! Getting it. They're in front. 15 to 3. The steal goes up. The team was really ready for him there. That's how you do it. Keep the heat on. Wait for the misstep. And then check it out. Frazier makes his first appearance. Gets the second to fall as well. Number 35 shoots it. Can't put it in for the run. Number 35 is having a hard time getting this shot to go, Vern. We just hope it doesn't wreck his confidence. But it's hard to see how it would. Inbounds the ball. Look out. Dumps it off. Goes up. Crap. Down into 35. Off target on the last layup. Just over 16 minutes left in the half. He must have thought someone was rotating over to block that. Ah, son of a bitch. Concentration even for a second. Look out. Passes it up court. Boop! I got back. Hell yeah. What KG instincts on the defensive end? Western Kentucky has been on the wrong side of this long run. And Tracy's got a report for us. Coach Carter is frantically talking to his assistants, trying to come up with a plan on defense to stop this run. He is not pleased with their current setup, to say the least. Thanks, Tracy. Hell yeah, Timba. Come on. Boom. Oh. Hell yeah. Come on, man. Dude, all these guys.
Play the game. Okay, law. Yeah. No disrespect to you, but you small time. Get ready for college hoops. Two K eight. The Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns go up against the North Carolina Tigers. This should be a whale of a game. Hi there, everyone. We're here at the Smith Center. This is Vern Lundquist with Bill Raftery and Tracy Wilson. What's your take on it, Bill? I'll really be watching the matchup at the four spot. Right. He's arguably the best power forward in the nation today. He's a tremendous threat thanks to the depth shooting touch of his. Jacobson is also a capable power forward. He's got great touch around the rim. And we won the tip off. Hell yeah. Dumps it down low. Ah shit. Wonderful job of going the basketball that time. Great pick. Let's check in with our sideline reporter, Tracy Wolfson, who has some info for us. Vern, earlier today I talked with Coach Williams. Guys, the message he conveyed to his players was don't get caught up in the way this matchup looks on paper. He told them, don't play down a team, make them play up to you. He wanted them to remember that the other team has been hearing all the same talk of how his team is favored and will come out strong. For the ah, son of a fucking bitch! Stolen away by Louisiana Lafayette. That was a clutch of a look. You could see that one coming before he released it. Goes up. Winkby. To the elbow, Holly from deep, Q yanks it down inside. Oh, the big fella with a tough rebound. No denying him on that one. Little crosses it up. Q snatches it from way above the rim. He pulled that lead up. That's a ball. Like Quit a going behind him. Oh my. Santiago. They keep fucking crossing that goddamn fucking three point line all the time. Dishes to the wing. Rebounded inside by Little. I didn't even fucking. Went after that rebound hard. Great work. The fuck? The steal by North Carolina. Shit is happening way too fast, I swear. Like you. North Carolina has a crew out there that hasn't run too many games together. Until they get a little more accustomed to playing together, chemistry could be a factor. Right side. Oh, three. But it's recovered by Jacob. Dumps it off. Passes it to the right. Only a few seconds left in the shot clock. Beyond the arc. Offline by Jacobson. Still a two point lead. Q takes it up. And got it. it. It's a high ball game. Paul inbounds the ball. Why would you take that? Sh oh my god. Just fucking slam it. Ain't that hard. Fucking games making me take shitty shots for no reason. Ah, fucking god. Swear. This fucking game sometimes. Misses the three pointer. Still a double digit game. Takes the three. Perfect shot by Santiago. They're out in front. Paul inbounds the ball. Is it to the wing? 
Hart can't stop the run. Under 17 minutes left in the half. Don't put anything weak up like that. I'm sure his coach will be telling him that. That last three ball is James Edmonton. Hook loose, but it's recovered by Collins. Winkfield puts it up. Winkfield yanks it down inside. Off target on the last layup. The Tar Heels with a chance for a double-digit lead. It's still early, but they can't take any more time to get this thing going. It hasn't been pretty for them so far. The shot was clearly affected by the contact there. Good call. He makes the first. Checks in for the first time. Gets the second to fall as well. Right. Inbounds the ball. And it's a six-point game. Santiago. I don't know why they just they just don't want to use their fucking strength. Man, I don't get it. Why do you just suddenly stop like that? Damn. Down the first one, skip for it, makes his first appearance. Gets the second to fall as well. The Louisiana Lafayette coach might have decided to switch things up a little bit. He's going to take time to make sure everybody's clear on the game plan. Hurry up! Jacobson inbounds the ball. They're playing wheel in here, bro. Goes up. Snapped inside. Quite right. The Tar Heels carry it up. They're on a 12 to 2 run. Allen is having a hard time getting his shot to go over there. We just hope it doesn't wreck his confidence. But it's nice to see how it would. They now have a double digit lead. Corey lead pass to the paint. Couldn't get the shot, but he was fouled and gets a trip to the line. He makes the first. He's off on ah, the whatever. Power passes it up for Right wing. Tip the wall. But it's recovered by right Power. <laughs> I'm a glorified free throw shooting contest. I don't want any part of it. 90-71. Alright, I recruited. Let's get on with it. <sighs> it's College Hoops 2K8. The Rice Owls square up against the North Carolina Tartans. Welcome, college basketball fans, to this semifinal matchup. We're here at Madison Square Garden in New York City. I'm Vern Lundquist, here with Bill Raftery and Tracy Wilson. What's your take, Bill? The story here is a matchup at off guard. Santiago is one of the premier shooting guards in the nation. He's such a good rebounder for an off-guard. To get that from his position is so valuable to a team. Dylan is a tremendous shooting guard as well. I've always been impressed with his shot blocking ability. He can be a real intimidator when he gets on a roll. Both of them are great competitors. It should be a compelling game to watch. Got it. Hell yeah. 
and they're now out in front by three. Still way up to it. Leads him with the pass. The team was really waiting for him there. That's how you do it. Keep the heat on. Wait for the misstep. Boom! How strong is this guy? Powers through the foul and gets the poor opportunity. Beautiful stuff. Seven nothing. How about that? Four point play. Nikolauskas to put an end to the run. Nikolauskas pulls it in. Misses the easy one. Now let's check in with the third member of our team, Tracy Wolfson. Tracy? Thanks, guys. Earlier on, I caught up with Coach Williams. He told me that they want to use their quickness to their advantage. He said they couldn't think of another squad that could match their team speed, and he wants to make sure that shows tonight by getting out on the break and showing how fast this game can be played. Guys? Thank you, Tracy. Sam T. catches it. Right wing. Skip pass. Left side. Santi from the wing misses everything. They're still down six. Kimbo hands it off. Tosses it up. Oh! Out of way. Boom! And nothing. Beasley with the shot, misses the free quarter. It's still early, Vern, but they can't take any more time to get this thing going. It hasn't been pretty for them so far. Knocks down the first one. He gets the second to fall as well. Samti inbounds the ball. Goes up. The run cannot be stopped by Mikulowskis. Leads him in. Rice is going to have to work hard to establish some chemistry there. They quickly. Because this is a young lineup that hasn't played with each other very long. Dumps it to the middle. Right. Oh, got back. There you go. Crossover. Beasley. Dillon takes it up. Little pulls it in. About 17 and a half minutes left in the half. Launches one from beyond the arc. Too long, and it was missed by Bright. They've still got a 12 point lead. Dillon catches it outright. Mikulowskis dumps it off. Poked loose, but it's recovered by Rice. Dillon takes the shot. Right, grabs the rebound inside. Santiago brings it up court. Kimba has it right side. Santiago passes it back to the right. From deep, that one is good by Kimba. They're up 17. Santi inbounds the ball. Dylan. Mikulowskis has it down low. Q grabs it, and that's his third rebound of the contest. Kimba shoots it. Can't connect on the quick shot. But they're still out in front. Five. Oh, whatever. Whatever the fuck you say, you goddamn bullshit game. I swear, fucking Rice somehow wins by 26 points after we beat their asses by 15. It's, this simulation is bullshit. Yeah, how dare I fucking want to get through a whole fucking ass game without fucking wasting half my life? Oh. 
the North Carolina Target. God. Welcome aboard, everyone, as we get ready to bring you... The tar heels were the last one. God damn it, son of a bitch. He lost track of where he was, Vern. That's just not heads up basketball. Knocked loose. And it scooped up a timber. I'd love to see that. He's looking around and pounced. Such a thief, Vern. He makes the first. He gets the second to fall as well. Fisher inbounds the ball. Takes it up. Hooked away. Say it isn't so. Huge missed opportunity. Now let's check in with the third member of our team, Tracy Wolfson. Tracy? You guys, earlier today I caught up with Coach Williams. He said he feels like they should win the rebounding battle every time out, and today is no exception. They have the ability to control games through their board work, and that's exactly what he wants them to do tonight. Thank you, Tracy. That's too easy, Vern. If the defense expects to stop them, they've got to get out there on last play off the mark by Santiago. Huge dismissal for reaching in. That's his first try. Oh, you can't come across the body like that. That is a textbook breach. Hook three, the Irish. Will the team present that was all for them, you motherfucker. Touched it with his hand. No, it think it's right back to them. This fucking game is bullshit sometimes, I swear. The intercept with great reflexes. He pounced in and picked that one off easily. That was tough on that last three by Santiago. Scott passes it up court. Little. Leads him with oh my ball. God. He pushes it to the right. Kimber is tagged with the reach, and that's his first foul. Let's get me out of this game. It's already fucking pissing me off. I don't even. Lost two in a row now! Because this game is getting under my skin. God. This, can this game just act normal for once? Like, stop, stop having me take a 15-point lead and then have me choke and lose by 26 to some nuts and nobodies. Like, seriously. A damn sim, no less. I really have to play the whole fucking ass game just to win. It's just it's stupid. I, I fucking not sim. I don't. That's what I meant. Not fucking sim. I don't fucking meant just quit or some shit. Dishes to the wing. The Tar Heels will get this one back. Stop forcing me to not sim. I don't have the fucking time for this shit. Right. Inbounds the ball. Fires. 
The three-pointer off the inbound play hit a Kimba. He's got three. Picks it up. Q yanks it down off the glass. Kimba. Behind the arc. Right. Snatches the rebound. Hooked it up. But it's recovered by Gardner West. Goes up. Pulled in by Hughes. Terrific job clearing some space under the glass. Physicality prevailing. Good from downtown by Little. They extend the lead to eight. It's stolen by Little. The D was really ready for it. That's how you do it. Keep the heat on. Wait for the misstep. And then it's hit. has it. On the low block. Last shot was stuffed through for two. He just won't be there. Hughes inbounds the ball. Dumps it down low. Right. Plays it up and in. And they now go up by two. Oh, whatever, don't care. Seventy one fifty five. What the fuck is that loss? Oh my god. Game just don't want me to fucking win. I'm just sick of this. I'm sick of this goddamn game already. You know what? I'm reloading the save. I don't give a shit. I'm just I'm just tired of the bullshit. Whatever. I'm so, so tired of just, like, ridiculous losses that should never happen. 
Oh, because I cause this game gets under my fucking skin and then it wants to just fucking. Just wants to piss me off even more with stupid fucking foul calls and all that fucking. I hate it. Doing this fucking whole season again. And this fucking game better not throw bullshit at me. I mean, go up 15 points, then lose by 26. That's horse shit. I'm just gonna keep fucking simming this goddamn game till I win, and I don't care, because I fucking beat it already. This game is so horse shit. I fucking save again. I'm just tired of this game's bullshit sometimes. It's just. How do y'all choke so many of these huge ass fucking leads for no reason? Oh, doing it again. I won that game. I'm forced to win in that shit. Because I beat it earlier. I 
I swear, if y'all motherfuckers have me lose to Binghamton, I'm just fucking force winning. I don't care. No way I'm losing to fucking Binghamton. Oh, horse winning. This game is on some fucking major ass bullshit. See, and now I went 121 to 55. What kind of bullshit is this game on? Win by six, win by fucking 66 points. I don't, this game is on fucking crack. Now all of a sudden the team that was fucking one and four is two and one. Whatever. I won this game earlier, so I'm fucking force winning it. I don't fucking care anymore. There you go.
how do you keep how do you lose this team? Oh, I ain't accepting that bullshit. About that much, dude. That's fucking bullshit. I hate this game. Oh, I'm restarting. I don't care how many times it takes. I'm fucking winning this game because I'm tired of fucking tired of getting screwed by this fucking game every fucking time. All because I don't want to slave away at a fucking game for like. 20 hours a stream. Good God. It's College Hoops on 2K Sports. The North Carolina Tar Heels battle the Iowa Hawkeyes. This should be a play of the game. Hi there, everyone. We're here at Harvard Hawkeye Arena. I'm Vern Lundquist, partner Phil Raffi, and our sideline reporter, Tracy Wilson. What's your take on this, Phil? I'll really be watching the matchup at the horse final. Harris is one of the strongest power forwards in the country. He's built like a tank. The big fella is an intimidator. Right. He's also a capable power forward. He's a gunner from long range, and that really opens up things for his teammates. Both of them are great competitors. It should be a compelling game to watch. The tip off and the game is underway. They're starting this one off with Minimum. Lead pass inside. Great. Boom! Scores the opening field goal. And they lead by two. Harris, way up good. Cole, it's blocked. Can't connect in the short range jumper. Oh, the big fella with a tough rebound. No denying him on that one. That last rebound was drained by Santiago. Straight inbounds the ball. Stolen quite right. Puts it in for two. They're in front, seven to zero. Let's check in with our sideline reporter, Tracy Wolfson, who has some info for us. Well, guys, earlier today I caught up with Coach Donahue. He emphasized just how important it is for them to crash the offensive boards and cash in on those second chance opportunities with their ability to rebound effectively. He wants to make sure they stay active on the offensive glass. Thank you, Tracy. Harris. To put it into the run, connects. They're now behind by four. Close it out. The three was drained by Santiago. He's got six. 
the Hawkeyes were the last ones to touch it, and they'll turn it over. I'm not sure who that was going to burn. It seems he hit the panic button and sent the ball sailing. Kimball takes a three. Little corrals the miss. Little didn't get that rebound by accident. He knew right where to be. They push the lead to nine. Skip pass, right wing. Oh, three, but it's recovered by straight. Hold in by Little. It's still early, Burn, but they can't take any more time to get this thing going. It hasn't been pretty for them so far. Misfired on that last three by Santiago. The shot was clearly affected by the contact there. Good call. Knocks down the first. Hell yeah. Oh, boy. The second to fall as well. Straight inbounds the ball. Goes up. Corral by Little. Still a double digit game. Right. It drops. They just keep rolling. The Hawkeyes will try to end this run. Straight. Left wing. To the rim. Snatched inside by Santiago. Beautiful rebound. Boxed his man out and never let him regain position. Nice touch on that last three. Quite right. A lot of. About 17 and a half minutes left in the half. Cole tosses it up. He gets hammered. Yeah, yeah how dare I go for a buck and block? Man, can't even. Can't even slightly touch anybody without getting a foul. Game just first. fucking hates my ass. He gets them both. Q inbounds the ball. From downtown. It's missed. Come on. Right. Fucking hating ass. Fucking bunch of bullshit. Here's the spin move. Harris keeps it alive on the offensive end. Off target on the last layup. He couldn't get it that time. And the D did a great job of making it tough on him. Couldn't get the shot, but he was fouled and gets a trip to the line. He makes the first. He gets it to make his first spin off the bench. He gets them both. Right around 17 minutes left in the half. Peterson tosses it up court. Straight. Fires. Makes it from 19. But they're still the Q inbounds the ball. Kimba. Fishes it to the wing. Releases. The three ball was good by Santiago. He Shooting 75% from deep. Cole releases from 16 feet. Little gets the rebound. Well, you can't fault him for taking that shot. The defense. All right. I swear, if they have us lose by fucking 24 points, it's because we didn't play the entire fucking game. Thank fucking God. I swear. Shit was getting annoying.
time for College Hoops 2K8. The North Carolina Tar Heels square up against the Marquette Golden Eagles. This should be a whale of a game. Hi there, everyone. We're here at the Bradley Center, along with Tracy Wilson and Bill Rafferty. I'm Vern Lundquist. Give us your take, Bill. Santiago catches it. Baseline. That last shot buried from 14 feet. A dynamite shot. Throw it away. All right. So I'm going, though, right into the net. This is out right. Santiago. Drive back them. They're in front. Five to zero. Mbakwe dumps it off. Knocks it loose, but it's recovered by French. Gets it outright. Delaware on the right block. Little pulls it down. Little went after that rebound hard. Great one. Misses by Hughes. But they're still out in front by five. Santiago gets the reach in call, and that's his first foul of the game. It takes quick hands to get the fit. And he was too slow that time. Mbakwe inbounds the ball. French passes it to the wing. Takes it up. Got the bucket and the foul. Will go to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Packs on the free throw for the three-point play. Right. Blows it up. Knocks it down to three-point land. They push their lead to five. Stolen away by North Carolina. Hooked away, but it's recovered by Garrett. Dishes it to the left side. French. Bruce has it right side. You have to keep your head up and eyes open at all times playing with this guy. That's right. Please fucking use your goddamn strength to fucking push him around. God. Fucking bump him. Fucking just. Do something other than take a goddamn jump shot. Why am I having to chuck all these fucking threes? Because this fucking game has an agenda against me. The defense closed so quickly that the easy beats turned into a very tough shot. Swear this fucking game sometimes. Second to fall as well. Garrett inbounds the ball. Under 18 minutes left in the half. In the key. Great right inside by Little. Hughes passes it up court. Right from deep. And Buckley snatches the rebound. They still have a seven point lead. Garrett launches one from beyond the arc. Connects. Oh God! He's gonna be stepping Curry from the line now. It's gonna be that type of fucking game. Now let's check in with the third member of our team, Tracy Wilson. Tracy, Vern, before the game, we talked with Coach Green. He told me that the speed of the team on the other end of the court is a huge concern. He said we have no excuses tonight. We have such great team speed that if we don't hustle back on defense on every trip, they'll be shooting layups on us all game. Thank you, Tracy.
down low, kicks it out to the perimeter. Mbakwe, Mbakwe throws the pass offline and it heads out of bounds. That wasn't the prettiest pass I've seen, Vern. They weren't quite on the same page. Beats it to the wing from downtown. Yeah, ah, some of it. But they still lead by eight. Bruce uses the crossover. French keeps it alive on the offensive end. And it's scooped up by Hughes. He picks up tons of steals for a big man. He's got quick hands, reads the situation. Ah, fucking damn it. He snatched the ball cleanly. That's a big asset. Bruce catches it outright. Skip pass out left. Mbakwe tosses it up. It takes a bad bounce and goes out of bounds. The Tar Heels will bring out some reserves. Oregon inbounds the ball. Hooked away. And it's uh, I can never get anything out. Goes up for the Hail Mary, but it's extremely I'm not. Ah, I hate this fucking game sometimes. It's time for College Hoops 2K8. 
The Fordham Rams battle the North Carolina Tar Heels. This should be a whale of a game. Welcome, everyone. We're here at the Smith Center. I'm Vern Lundquist here with Bill Raftery and Tracy Borson. What's your take on this, Bill? This game features a great match. Shoots. The game's first basket is made by Santiago. And they now go up by three. I swear it's fucking game and it's bullshit. I I literally cannot get inside. Meanwhile, these assholes just like Nope! Just give them a fucking goddamn red carpet to the fucking paint. Every goddamn time. I just this game is fucking broken. I hate this shit. Newspapers don't win basketball games. He knows all the members of the media have said they should dominate this game, but he and his players know it isn't that easy, and they prepare for this game just like every other. Thank you, Tracy. Oh, three. And it's scooped up by Kimball. I like how he gets himself into defensive position at the right place, the right time yet again. Hyman inbounds the ball. Decent to put an end to the run. Little corrals the miss inside. Fordham has a crew out there that hasn't logged too many games together. Until they get a little more accustomed to playing together, chemistry could be a factor. Wilkins. Dishes it to the wing. Quick loose. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by North Carolina. There we go. Twelve He gets them both. Three inbounds the ball. Kimball gets ball to the I don't care about this fucking game anymore. It's getting stupid.
Nobody's gonna fucking come anyway. Sometimes, no, no. Yeah, 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 I didn't yeah, yeah. Detroit. Uh, sometimes, I no, didn't no, slip. No, 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 not me. Come on. Nigga, I ain't got time to talk. You better. Nigga, I'll take everything that you want. Nigga, fuck. All right, Make all right. Stay perfect. Never depreciate. I'm better than ever. Scrap terror. Live a nightmare. When you wake up, I'm right there. I train while you sleep. Hip hop veteran known to have a fetish for heat. Recall times of when the nigga said it was beef. Shortly afterwards, he fled the police. Keep running. All your tough talk. Crew ain't having none of it. Love said. Whenever we bump heads, I guarantee we gon' be on some other ish. We flex muscle and plan our next hustle to make the checks double and kick back and a bit. Guilty sentence to hit man. You feel with. I stomp your ass dips out and put the scuff a kick. I keep the females dead. I hit you. Just open your mouth. Hurry. I ain't got time to talk. You better. Take the average you should walk. I got a schedule to keep up. Homie. 
I say you got the bread, speed up, show me. Every second moves close to the dead, so do it. And you never know what you got left, so move it. If I was the proper time in the music, we go. Slow lanes for the bum, this is my life. I walk through these hip hop shows in my mind. You know what, fuck it, we rain out. I don't care. So an episode after we rock, sorry baby, that's a no can do. We out of here. I bust loops it due to my trust issues. I don't have it in me. Pass the remarriage. Ah! Uh, Other fuckers, a complicated ass, ass fucking names. Tomorrow. My man Dilla saw potential in this. So for now I keep a pencil and fist and jock poetry. Now that people notice me in the D, I can't walk through without having everybody to talk to. I slide by and play the wall, zone into the music with a plan to take it all to destiny. And nobody fucking shows up just because they goddamn didn't show up like fucking one and a half hours earlier. Alright, see y'all guys tomorrow.